The reading for this morning is uh, from Acts chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How then is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit on those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's Pentecost, right? Pentecost. Pentecost, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. church. Right. Absolutely right. And so the coming of the Spirit. So Jesus had foretold uh, the coming of the Spirit. Uh, he said that he would not leave them comfortless, but that the Holy Spirit would come. And that, uh, and that as the Spirit came, then all of a sudden there is now this, this resurrected presence of Jesus among the people. So no longer is he just kind of a localized presence here and here and here. Now by the power of the Spirit, he's, he's within this, this new organism that's called the body of Christ. But in order to be able to kind of get the big picture, we have to step back and set it into context a little bit. So it's called Pentecost. Not because of the day that the Holy Spirit came, but Pentecost was a, was a Jewish feast that was from back in the earliest pages of the Old Testament. Pentecost, Penta, 550, 50 days after the Passover. And so for the Jews, that was the culmination. It was the end of the harvest. And so uh, one of the requirements was that if you were within traveling distance, you needed to come to Jerusalem in order to give thanks for all this bounty that God has given to you. So two million people, scholars say, descended on Jerusalem. Two million people in Jerusalem. So if you want to kind of get a feel for it, think Black Friday at Walmart. <laughs> right? Crammed together as much, and everybody trying to get their thing done, right? So they're all, they're all gathered together, and they come from geographically all over the place. So they're as far north as Rome and Italy, and all throughout that then-known kind of civilized world, and as far south as Egypt. And they all come from all over the place. But in the center, uh, gathered at a place, uh, is, at a house, uh, is a group of about 100 people. And these are all Galileans. These are people that, uh, that had followed Jesus. Um, Galileans were kind of looked down on by, by the, the Jews that, that were there in Jerusalem as being uncultured, kind of backwater hick kind of people. 
um, but they were the ones who were, who were followers of Jesus. They were the ones who had experienced this, this, uh, this resurrection presence of Jesus. They were all gathered together in this one place. And, uh, and then the, the, uh, the reading from Acts says, suddenly the Spirit comes. Suddenly the Spirit comes. So the Spirit doesn't come because somebody said an incantation someplace. The Spirit doesn't come because somebody said, Holy Spirit, get down here right now. Um, don't you just sometimes wish that you could tell God what to do? I mean, don't you? And I try. Do you try sometimes? It doesn't work very well. It usually backfires on me. Uh, and so what happens is God's got his own timetable. God does what he knows is the best thing to do for us at any particular time. And so God does it. And so suddenly, just like from out of nowhere, suddenly the Holy Spirit comes. And you can't see the Spirit. And so you wouldn't really necessarily know that the Spirit is there. And so God is gracious in giving some, some, uh, some, some signs, tactile signs of the presence of the Spirit to kind of be able to, to indicate what kind of a spirit this is. And so the, the first thing is the sound of this mighty wind. It's the sound. Now notice, they're in a the house, um, so it's not the blowing, it's not the actual blowing, you know, papers and everything flying all over the place wind. It's the sound of a mighty wind. And the wind has, a, has an Old Testament kind of long back from the earliest pages again of the Old Testament history. So wind or breath is the, comes from the Hebrew word called ruach, the breath of God, the spirit of God, the, the wind of God. It goes back to early in the, in the creation stories when God is there in the, in the Garden of Eden and God creates all of the things, all of the animals are there, but there's still something missing. And so then he takes his hands and he pulls together some of the earth, some of the dust on the earth, and he blows into it. He blows into it, and it becomes a living being, Adam, the first human being. And he stands up, and he's, he's there. He's raised up to life. The Spirit, the breath of God, gives life to things that were just dead and inanimate. And so this breath of God moves now onto this, this gathering of this hick group of Galileans there and whoosh, brings life to them. And by the power of the Spirit, they stand up as the people of God. And then there's a second thing on these tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Isn't that cool? Did you ever like, want to play with fire when you were a kid? Oh, and did you ever have your parents tell you not to play with fire? Don't play with fire. And why do we tell our kids not to play with fire? Because it's, you can get burned. It's dangerous, right? It's dangerous. But we need it. And so there is this thing about fire that you don't play with it. But it is, it is it's, it's, it's just powerful. It accomplishes great things. And so it's been associated from the earliest pages of the Old Testament to the presence of God. You don't play with it, but you honor it. You respect it. You're in awe because of it. And so if you remember uh, the story of Moses, remember Moses at, the, at this point is just a broken down shepherd. He's run away for trying to save his life. He's out in the wilderness. He's, he's a shepherd. And, uh, and all of a sudden, one day, he just kind of notices there's a glint off in the corner of his eye. And he looks over and he says, what the heck is that? He says, so he leaves his flock and he goes over to investigate because there's a bush that is on fire but it's not being consumed. It's not being burned up by the fire. And so he goes over there, and as he gets closer to it, he hears a voice coming from the fire. And it says, Moses, take off your shoes, for you are on holy ground. And then he has this first conversation with Yahweh, this I am that I am that is sending him. It's the experience of his call by the presence of God. This presence of God that now descends on the people. And so in these, in these tongues of fire, it descends on them. And who does it descend on? Do you remember? I mean, there are, so there are 11 disciples who are there, 
11 disciples, you'd think it'd descend on them, right? I mean, the holy guys, the ones who were there with Jesus, kind of doing all this, this stuff. But it's, the, this text doesn't say that. It says that the tongues of fire descended on everybody who was there. Everybody who was there. So it wasn't just the holy guys. It was everybody who was there. The screw-ups and the people who kind of couldn't figure it out. But they were gathered together. They knew that they had experienced Jesus in the presence of his, now his life and now his resurrected form. They'd experienced him, and now all of a sudden, the presence of God descended and filled them. So it's not about us. It's not about our history. It's not about all of the stuff that we did that looks impressive hanging on our wall or not. It's about the presence of God that fills us, and it's a powerful, dynamic presence. And you kind of have to step back in, in awe. Are you ever just kind of in awe of the presence of God and what God's presence does in you? It's an awesome, awesome thing. And then the third thing, um, these tongue, these, uh, this speaking in different languages, the experience of tongues. Um, now, uh, in our culture, in our time, uh, there are churches that make a regular experience of speaking in tongues, right? Different, different kinds of utterances that they have, the Assemblies of God, Pentecostal churches, and throughout all denominations, I've spoken in tongues, throughout all denominations, there are people who speak in tongues, um, but that's not what this is about, uh, because this is about language. This is about language. This is about these, uh, these hicks that were there that are fairly uneducated who now all of a sudden are proclaiming this the greatness of god but they're doing it in languages that they don't understand but other people who are around them do egyptians and parthians and cretans and all of these people hear the the wonders of god proclaimed in their own language even though these galileans haven't got a clue what's going on do you remember in the Old Testament? So this is, this is Old Testament, you know, kind of reminder um, lesson this morning. Do you remember in the Old Testament the story of the Tower of Babel? Do you remember that? So there's, a, again, back in Genesis, um, there's a, there's a, there are people around. They must, have, they must have, you know, the harvest has been in or something, and they're, they're just kind of gathered around, and they're bored. They don't know what they're doing. And so they, uh, as one of them says, I know what we should do. I mean, we're, we're pretty hot stuff. I mean, we're big stuff on the earth here. And so this is what we should do. We should get together and we should build a tower. And we're going to build a tower so high it's going to go up to heaven. And then when we get up there, we're going to knock on the door of heaven and we're going we're to say, God, move over because now we're here. Right? That was the story of the Tower of Babel. And so they started building the tower. And then God comes down and he looks at them and he says, what? I mean, so you guys got all of this time and energy, and this is what you do with it? And so then God curses them, right? And he curses them in their language. And so now it's like there are two guys who are there working side by side, trying to build this, this tower, and one guy um, asks the other guy for a brick. And so he goes to ask him for a brick, but instead of saying it in his own language, he says it in French. And now this guy over here, who's supposed to hand him the brick, he looks at him like he's crazy, and he responds in Italian. And they don't understand each other. They can't figure it out. And so it happens with all of the people who are working on this tower, all different kinds of languages, because of the curse of God. And so now, all of a sudden, this impressive project just kind of falls apart, and people just kind of wander. And so then tribes are created of all of these people who, have, who speak different languages. Now... We come to Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes. And now this, this group of people who are filled by the presence of God now speak in other languages so that they can be understood by others. And now all of a sudden, rather than division, now all of a sudden becomes unity People are called together now, not to build a stupid tower, but to build the kingdom of God, to be able to do things together that matter in this world, to be able to see how it is that, that God can come and rule on this earth, because the principles of Jesus by the power of the Spirit get enacted by the people of God, the body of Christ that now stands up in order to be able to do the work of God. 
And so that same spirit fills us. That same spirit fills us. Do you like balloons? Do you like balloons? I mean, I think they're kind of cool. Do you like balloons? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of cool.、Um, you know, what would the world be like if, it, if there were no balloons? I mean, that'd be a sad thing, don't you think? That would just be a sad thing. So I do have to say, so I do like balloons because they're fun. And,、uh, and so,、um, so, just a little experiment here. So, we're just going to have fun with a balloon, right? Okay, so you ready? One, two, three. There. Isn't that great? <laughs> you guys are, you are a hard odd audience. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, so you're telling me that something's missing here, huh? What's that? All right, what's missing? I、oh, gotta blow air in it. Where were you at the last service? <laughs> All right, so let me see what I can do. That is a lot of work. I'm feeling a little dizzy. Let me see. <laughs> I don't know if my face is more red or the balloon. <laughs> well, so now, now is it interesting, right? I mean, it kind of it playful, it bounces around, things can happen. It's interesting, it attracts our attention. You kind of wonder what the options are, what kinds of things can happen, where you can go, what kinds of things that you can do. You know, it's because of the breath, to use the Hebrew word, the spirit that is inside of it, that all of a sudden something that was just kind of bleh, just all of a sudden comes to life. And because of the pressure inside of it, There's, there are all kinds of things that make it interesting. You can give it to somebody else. Oh! Oh no! What happened? Because of the pressure that's inside of it by this spirit that's there, the spirit just, it just wants to get out. And so if there's an avenue for it to get out, it just goes and it ends up propelling it out into places it never would have gone. Doing things that it never would have done before. So, I said this morning,、um, we launched off the mission team, the youth mission team. They're going off to Colorado and they're going to be doing God's work in a church there. And they're going to be touched by the Spirit. And people who are there are going to be touched by the Spirit. And they're going to leave their footprints, their soul footprints on people who are there. And the same thing's going to happen to them because of the power of the Spirit. But you don't have to go. To Colorado or to Africa or to Zimbabwe in order to be able to be used by the Spirit. You can go into the next room. You can go across the room. You can go to your neighbor's house. You can go to wherever it is, to your school, to your business, to wherever it is. If you go in the power of the Spirit, filled by the Spirit, all of a sudden there's this, this propulsion that takes you and this. Opportunity to be able to see the expanse of God's kingdom and the power of Jesus through you. Pentecost is a big celebration for us. Not just because it's, it's a red day on the calendar, it's a big celebration for us because it recognizes that we're filled with a presence that's far beyond us. And this is the opportunity for us to be able to celebrate our birth, our new birth as the people of God, the body of Christ, and to be able to ask ourselves the question where should we go? What should we do? How would God use us? Good questions. Amen.